calling from? My name is Tanya D. I'm from Minnesota, Minnesota, and I had listened to Brother Phil Valentine uh, some years ago. I am 67 now, Woo! and I had already been out of the church because of that damn prosperity message they were singing, and they're still singing it. Wow. Thank you, sister. That's what's up right there. Appreciate that. Do you have a message for for those who are still in the church? And when I say those, I'm talking yeah. about everybody who subscribed to that Bible, whether you call yourself a Hebrew, whether you call yourself Christian, seven-day Adventist, whatever. It's all the same. Go ahead, sister. Yes. What I wanted to say is that they think that is the only book that they can read right can you did you, you go to school and teach and, and and learn english and math and and science and why do you just want to stick with one book and and not know the rest of the, the uh, truth you know what it's i ask the people me. i mean yes go ahead sister yeah i mean i was even like that Uh, well, Jesus saved me. I said, well, how can Jesus save me from myself? <laughs> and Jesus couldn't save himself, right? Yeah. He can't save me because I had to save me first. There you go. Can't nobody save me but me. There you go. You are your redeemer. Nobody is coming to redeem you but you. And until we understand that, you will find that we will no longer be last in line. Everybody is passing us in line right now because we're the ones that stuck in that book. And see, the um, a lot of our like, Mexican brothers and sisters coming over here, they're going to be the new niggas. They are going to be the new niggas because they are now picking up the white Jesus. See, a lot of our people is leaving it alone and they are at least trying to get a black one. But that is even more damaging because it, you're trying to make it real when it's not. Look at our people trying to get black Santa Clauses, trying to make it real when it's not, you know? <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah. Oh, thank you so much, brother. Thank you, my sister. I appreciate you. Peace. Peace and black power to my red, black, and green Hebrew brother in the building. What's up, Michael Edwards? Please, please. Don't please start no power, shit, brother. nigga. <laughs> <laughs> Don't start no yeah. shit, brother. What's up, man? How's oh, my boy coming through clear? I'm coming through clear. Man, everybody hear you loud and clear, brother. That's good, man. How you doing, brother? Sir? I'm good. Go ahead and drop your shit. I know you calling in the drop it. <laughs> I just called in with a question instead of a instead of a statement. Go ahead. I want the question, and it can be even a, a, understood as a rhetorical question or whatever, or internal question. We don't have to answer it. Go ahead. Right? Go ahead. Okay, I listened to Brother Phil say uh, not only a contradictory statement, but the statement kind of painted him as kind of insane and circular reasoning. Here's the question. If the Bible doesn't mean what it says, even on the textual level in English, listen to what I'm saying closely. I'm listening, I'm listening. Everybody. If the Bible doesn't mean what it says, how is it that another man can define the Bible based upon his disbelief of what the Bible says? Let me say it one more time. Yeah. I want the people to understand uh -huh. that question. Mm -hmm. How is it that a man does not believe what the Bible says concerning itself, but then chooses to define what the Bible teaches and says about itself. That's easy. And the reason, and the re okay, okay. And the reason I'm asking that is, it is a psychosis. If I was to tell you that I don't believe in Zoroastrianism, right? Mm -hmm. That's a belief system that is heresy for me. But if I go to a Zoroaster and tell the Zoroaster. Hey, let me explain Zoroastrianism to you and what it really means. That's called circular reasoning on a quantum level because it suggests that the person speaking actually wants to be involved in have something you, that they seek to destroy. Have you ever considered, like when you study yourself, my brother Michael Edwards, 
And you mm-hmm. study yourself inward and outward for years, for countless years, brother, like Brother Phil Valentine, Reverend Phil Valentine. And in so studying yourself, you already know where all the dogma and all the false stuff begin to come. So when you pick up the Bible, when you start reading the Bible, you say, hold on. I see this on the walls of Kemet. Hold on. You're talking about the virgin birth. I saw that with the sister I said in Heru. How she sat on the phallus. I mean, when you start looking at how Cain killed his brother, you say, hold up now. I can look at the walls and see Set when Set came over and killed his brother, Horus. You see, so we begin to see the stories of other people that try to play in our story, that tries to plagiarize our story. But of course, it's not going to be right and exact. It's going to have a little twist to it. It's going to have a little different, different taste to it. But guess what? You can mm-hmm. never take away that our story was here thousands of years before that Bible story came about, brother. So that's why he can sit there and tell you that this Bible right here, this is not real. Jesus is not real. You're talking about a man who posed to be the most powerful man in history ever, who walked on water, who made the blind see, who made the deaf hear. How come nobody, where he at? Come on, brother Mike. It becomes a time where we got to put away childish things, my brother, and begin Mm -hmm. to come together because all religion, not just Christianity, all religion divides us and separates us as a people. We begin to fight each other like we're doing now, just like the white man been doing with Christianity and Islam. They've been fighting for thousands of years and they still fight in the day because we're trying to pick that shit up like it's ours. And now we're fighting each other over it. Check. No, that's wrong. Absolutely wrong. That's Almost wrong, bro. Hold on. You're saying Almost that they are not fighting they are not fighting each other, brother? No, let me let me Christianity and Islam is still not at war, you saying, brother? No, absolutely not. And if you understood the history of Christianity and Islam, you'd understand that Christians created Islam and its tenets and its first holy place in the book. But that's beside the point. But hold on, Mike. I want to touch that point, which you just said. You said Christian, Christians created Islam. Uh-huh. You just said that, right? Christianity created Islam. So, you know, would you like so, me to explain so, it? No, no. I'm going to say this. If that is true, Michael Edwards, how come it says in the Quran, do not take the Christians and the Jews as your friends. So why would the Christians put that in their own book where they don't want to become friends with them? I mean, come on, Mike. What is you talking about? You know what the Quran also says? What? No, I want you to deal with that part, what I said. Why would I, like, why would I create something and then, hold on, hold on, hold on. Why would I create something and give it to you, Michael, and say, yo, don't take Sarnetta as your friend. He gonna get you, brother. Mm -hmm. Why would I do Mm -hmm. that and put and give it to you, brother? (laughs) Come on, okay. boy. All right. The Quran itself says indeed that the children of Israel are the covenant bearers and holders through right genetic uh, assimilation. That means that the book called the Quran says that we are not the people. We're not the covenant holders. So when you take a book like that and you ascribe it to either any point higher than this actual cultural norm, then you've done an injustice to yourself and even assimilating that to yourself, you misunderstood the point of the book. Now, who said that, though, Mike? Who said that? I'm trying to find out who said it because you said the Quran said this. Who said it? Uh, It's in the Quran. Would you like me to go? Let me Google it for you. No, I just want to know who said it. Who said? No, I want to give you the surah. I want to give you the surah. No, I don't want it. I don't want you to give me the surah. You know why? You ain't gonna be able to give it to me because if you're not telling me, if you're not telling me that, why you so aggressive? No, I'm trying to share something with you. If you're not telling me that God said these things, if you're telling me that man said it, then you're proving my point. Man created the Bible and the Quran. That's why it's always man saying these things. Not God. No, those are your ideas. Now, let me tell you what those Where things are. Where are these Let me get my balls, man. Hold on, brother. Go ahead, Hold on. Go ahead. Let me tell you what those things project about themselves. The Bible says about itself and its writers that they are inspired. Nobody said that God came down from heaven 
and wrote the Bible. That's insanity. That's a circular reasoning pseudo scholar. So story. if that's true, how come we are saying on, God brother. said this? Second, Sinetta. Go ahead. Sinetta, are you that afraid? Go ahead, brother. Go ahead, brother. I'm going to wait, and then I need baby. you to answer these questions, though, Mike. <laughs> brother, if you get let me speak, I will go all the way. All right, right? Go ahead. all the way. Go ahead, now, brother. let me go back. Let go me go back. When you spoke about the Bible and you said that when I look at the Bible and I see what you think are correlations become between cultures, that I shouldn't understand it to be pure, right? But I'm telling you, when I see the Bible, I look at the Bible through its cultural paradigm, not the fact that I'm an American atheist. When I look at the Bible, I see that the Bible is written in three different tiers, numerical, idiomatically, and then textually, right? So when you look at the Bible and you see Balaam's donkey talking, when you and Dr. Phil, you and, you and pseudo Dr. Phil, see Balaam's <laughs> donkey talking, listen, listen, this is so funny. This is, cause I, this is the age old mistake of how Lucifer or Hillel beats our generation, generation after generation, because of ignorance. Listen, an idiom is what is uh, created to make you understand culturally that Balaam's donkey understood more than its rider, right? But when you read it in English, it only speaks to you and that sister that, that you know, just called in. She then got mad at the prosperity doctrine in the church. But what did you miss, though? You see what I'm saying? If you're mad at the preachers saying that you should prosper and they should prosper, then why come to the comedic doctrine that says the same thing, but in a more, you know, loose fashion? Same thing is when with the culture. You look at it from one side, but you miss all of the other three dimensions, right? So when I see the Bible, I don't see what you see. I see a literal, numerical, textual soliloquy. That it's because you're it's because your third eye has not opened up yet. You'll still get chains. You get chains on your eyelashes, brother. That's keeping them shits closed. And you got weights on them. And that's why you can't open up your eyes, brother. So you don't see what I see. Go ahead, brother. I know this is heavy. I know this is heavy. Yeah, it's heavy, but brother. This takes, this takes a lot of manhood and womanhood for a person to say, okay, I've been laughing about Balaam's donkey, but I never knew that Balaam's donkey's story was an idiom and what an idiom is. So let me ask you a question right now, all right? And I'm not asking this to embarrass you. What I'm saying is, this is all across the board with our people, the lack of education, all right? What is an idiom? I-D-I-O-M. What is it? An uh, idiot. It, no, not an idiot, brother. No, 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 not an idiot. Oh, I don't know. You tell me. What is it? Explain to I, us. I, the letter I-D-I-O-M. Go ahead. Idiom. That is a cultural anomaly that occurs in every culture. That means if you're not a part of the culture, when I say to you, Balaam's donkey spoke, you're going to think I'm speaking Balaam's donkey spoke. But culturally, it meant in the Syriac, Aramaic, Hebrew culture it came from, it meant that the rider could, the donkey could understand what the rider couldn't. That's an example of an idiom, not 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 an analogy, right? This is the ignorance of our people. They say the Bible is full of analogy. But analogy is not an idiom. Okay, right? Mike. Analogy is... No, I'm serious. This is the... All right, Mike. Now, let me ask you. I'll let no, you no, talk, no, brother. Let me finish my statement. Go ahead. Okay, brother. I will. But just let me finish the statement. This is the level of education and revelation that has to take place for you to digest the Bible, right? The Bible is not a, a Dr. Seuss document. It's not a laughable document. It's actually one of the world's most confirmed documents. They don't keep fake documents in the Library of Con Congress, right? They don't keep it in the Vatican Library. They don't keep it in the Milan and the British Museum. Fake, you know, false documents and whatnot. So we have to be careful because right. we speak from a place of ignorance. All right, God. brother. Now, let me ask you a question. Can uh, you show me any scripture? In the Bible, that God said this, that God said, and you know for a fact that God said it, or is it man saying that God said it? Because we know in the Bible, no, first I want to ask you, can you show me anything in the scriptures where God 
is saying something. When somebody's quoting God for a fact, mm-hmm. or is it man saying? Absolutely. Show me one. Absolutely. Absolutely. Would you like me to? Would you like me to go? Which, no, which, I just want, like, brother. I don't need you to be long with it. Just hit me with one scripture and tell me where's that at okay. and what God. No, I'm gonna give you better. I'm yeah. gonna give you so much better. I'm yeah. gonna give you rock solid history because, I, like I said, I don't want you to go too long. Just tell me. Get right to the you point. Know, I'm promise, brother. Go ahead, I promise, brother. brother. I know how to get to it. Go ahead. I'm not gonna give you a scripture. Go ahead, brother. No, God I don't want. I don't want scripture. Can you show me okay, anything in the history. Bible That's where brother, God listen, listen. wrote this and God said this? I promise you, listen, listen, listen. In the third century BCE, not only the king. What's the scripture, brother? The of, What's the scripture? Listen, brother, listen, listen. Mike, listen. Mike, see, you're doing it wrong. You ain't, you ain't, brother. Right. I said, you give me a scripture. scripture. You want something that you believe. I want something you want in the scripture. scripture. In the Bible, okay. because we say that okay. this is so God. When I give you the scripture. Yes. Hold on, brother. When I give you the scripture, can I then give you the history behind it? Now nah, that's going to take too long, brother. Just give me the no, scripture, it's brother. It's going to take two minutes. Two minutes. That's long, man. You scared of answer, so That's know. long, brother. Two minutes. <laughs> Go ahead. Two minutes. Go ahead. Okay. Two minutes. Right. Give me the scripture. All right. Where you at, Mike? Mike. Mike, Mike, I'm here. So y'all can see I didn't hang up on him. You see the number still moving, y'all. All right, he called him back. Let me see. Come on, Mike. Where you at, brother? I'm going to call you back. I hung up, I'm going to call you back. Because the phone went dead for a minute. I want you to think I'm running from you, brother. Hello? You What's happening? No, no, no. Your phone went dead, brother. Your phone went dead. Okay. Come on. Okay. Give me something okay. that God oh, said that you know for a fact that God said it. Okay. Here it is. Here it is. The part of the book called Exodus. Okay. In the book, in the book that is called also the Pentateuch that comes from this historical answer. Tell me what God said. After. Tell me what God okay. said. The Most High began to speak to what is called the children of Israel. And guess what happened, Sonetta? No, no. Tell me what they God said. said hold on, brother. <laughs> hold on, brother. You want to know? Yes. God said the entirety of the history and genetic code of man through commandments that are called now the Ten Commandments. Now, who said These that? Were, hold on, brother. Hold on. If you ask a question, you got to be bad enough to answer. Listen to it. Now. We say in God, we say in the Most High. And I'm telling you where in the Bible it says, not that the word came like it came through the prophets. I'm not telling you like in the garden where you said, Phil said, who was in there waiting. And I'm saying he wasn't there either. I'm saying that the scripture in Exodus says that the Most High spoke from a mountain and said to the children of Israel, the entirety of man, genetically, <laughs> historically, and even philosophically, in what are called commandments. And the New Testament calls that love. But here's the strange part, Sonetta. Those people said that we can't handle that. Please don't allow that again. Right? The Bible says that the earth trembled, that the people trembled. Huh? about this great God that you would like to hear from. But I don't think so. You would not like to hear from that guy. See, this is what you I'm talking about, people. Mike. Now, You're minute, saying brother. a let bunch of nothing, answer. brother. Let I'm asking. Hold on. Hold on, Mike. You got to let me talk, too. I asked you a simple question. Let me finish, brother. Oh, man, Mike. Come on, brother. Let me finish. I wouldn't do that to you. Out of respect. Come on. Come on, brother. You asked me what scripture, and I gave you. You asked me what scripture. Now I got to you Exodus. Now I got to ask you. you. How? Hold on. You You can't finish until you You know what it is. Why is you scared, Mike? Why is you scared? Why are you afraid, Mike? How do you know? Hold on, brother. Hold on. Let me at least get to the people. Brother, if you call it in on the show, you got to respect the host. I'm going to let you talk, but it got to go both ways. But hold on, listen. It got to go both ways, brother. You talk for a minute, I come back. You come back, I come back. I heard yours. Ask me a question. How long? How many seconds you got? How many? I only got 60 left. 
Because I gave I gave sixty a minute ago. Go ahead, go, go, go ahead, brother. Sixty more. Get it out, brother. Thank I think you're scared. I love you. Go ahead. I love I you love too, you, brother. Man. <laughs> okay. Now the historical part of that that doesn't have to do with the Book of Exodus is the third century BCE in the Ptolemaic dynasty that came up with the idea that we need to bring these people from Palestine into Egypt to translate for a real people that had lost their language. Me and Shaka Amos, I beat Shaka to death about it, and uh, the Honorable Dr. Williams. We both talked about the historical Septuagint, or what is called the Pentateuch, that was created in our land, our black land. So now, again, I'm not giving you nothing that's not that's fake. I'm telling you what the Bible says, and then I give you actuality in history. All right, brother. With that's people that come from Africa. All right, don't run, don't hang up on me. All I, oh, all I ask you, you, brother. You stand up. All I <laughs> asked you, my brother, was to give me something in the Bible that God said Himself, and that and you know. I do that? Hold on, I and didn't that, do that. No, you Exodus. didn't, because you're dealing with faith. Exodus. You don't know if God said that or not. You're dealing with faith. I you're... didn't and listen. That is recorded in the same book, Sonetta. Well, no, listen to what I'm telling you. Do you yes, know, Mike, hold on, Mike, hold on, Mike. I'll let you talk. So you're saying that you know for a fact, and be careful because everybody listening to you right now, you know uh -huh. for a fact that God spoke those words. You know that, or you believe I know for a fact that the highest government in the land documented that book, and they No, nah, that's not what I asked you, brother. That's not what I asked you. That's not what I asked you, Mike. Not only my understanding, but oh, the Mike, Priesthood. come on. See, you already, you've proven Kenneth my point. Was a part of the you proven my point, my brother. So you I still know, you didn't say it. What I'm I understand you. what you're saying. Let me ask you now. Mm -hmm. Hold on, Mike. Mike, 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 you, Mike, you scared of this knowledge, brother. Because, see, brother, most Hebrews you, can't answer the question. I'm going to ask you, you again. Hear me, a, hear me you out, you Mike. You do you know for a fact? Hold on. Do you know uh, for a fact that God himself or herself spoke these words out of his mouth? Do you know that? And God said that. Uh, and, and I'm going to answer for you. Hold on. I'll answer no, for no, you. you because here you go. I'm going to answer, answer for you. you. I'll answer I'll according you to your answer Bible. Answer according to your Bible, no, God I'll said, man me. has never seen me and, and his I'll life was spared. And his life was spared. So how can anybody write down anything that God said? If you never heard him, you was never there. Come on, Mike. What is he doing? I am about to agree with you and give you a better one to help you. Go ahead. The Bible actually says that God is a spirit. And those that worship that spirit must worship it in spirit and truth. Spirits don't speak. Spirits inspire. Spirits visit. And spirits inhabit bodies. So now you let me now, now with that, stop. Stop. Spirits okay, speak. Spirits stop. inspire. So Hold on. Spirits inspire, right? Spirits inspire, they so, speak, and they inhabit. So, body, so like have I it said. stopped now, or do they still do that today? No, I'm telling you that if you go on past the Pentateuch, if you go on past no, the no, book, regardless, brother, right, forget oh, the no, book right now. Mean? Do the spirits you're still saying, inspire on, today? You can't yes or no? <laughs> I'm experienced, I'm brother. Listen, come on, Mike, man, I got if you, man. You know, if you want to know beyond the Tanakh or beyond the Torah. It talks about how the word of God came to all of the prophets as actually called <laughs> Mike. Me, son. No, listen. I'm listening to you, you brother, but you're not making Damn, Mike, you don't want to let nobody say, talk because you're scared of me, brother. You're scared of me, Mike. You don't want me to talk. You don't want me to talk. See? You asking a million questions, but when I hit you with it in the stomach, you call Okay, so let me ask you. Was God in the church when that little baby was being raped and molested by her father in the in the house of God? God was in there? Hold on. You say God was in there? Where God was? Where he was at? He was he was in your mind observing that baby getting raped and her father doing it and said, I give you the earth and to subdue it. That's what the Bible says. In the so Bible. you do it agree says, with me on, that God is on, man. So you on, agree with me, right? That on, man is God. On, you don't even know what you're saying on. right now, Mike. No, I don't agree with that because I'm about to tell you that. Listen to me. Your name is Sonetta. 
Your name means the God. But watch this. The Bible says if you're the God, then you become accountable. The Bible says in the first few chapters that you are to subdue, subdue, subdue the earth and rule it. But how now do you want to say a God that you don't believe in is the cause of all of your woes? But you're the God. You're the reason that that happened. You're the God that watched it happen. And you're the God that didn't apply the justice because God says, I call ye gods. In the scripture, even Moshe was called El Moshe. Even Joshua was called El Moshe or El Joshua or El Yahusha, right? But Sarnetta, you called the God. But why did you sit back and watch it happen? Why did you not go apply God-like justice? You see, that's accountability for the man that wants to thumb his nose at God. You see, and that's where it comes down to, right there for our people. Our people always want to look outside of ourselves to blame someone or to look up for God. And the Bible says, stop looking in the sky, looking for Christ. He said, you take on my mind. You be conformed to the image and the kingdom is within you. So now, why do you point at God? Why do you point at Christ? And why do you point at the book that is inspired enough to empower Hey, you? Brother Mike, nothing you happens see? without the permission of God, Chet. That's right. The God above and the God that you God are. knows as and above, sees everything, above, Chet. As above, as above, so below. God knows and as sees everything, will, Chet. As you give will and you God knows and sees God. everything, Chet. God sees everything you see. So you're yeah, saying that, so did God, God see before, did God see, see, you know you everything. fucked up, right? You know you done fucked up, right? I got to get that clip, man. <laughs> you know you done fucked up, right? So you telling me that didn't God see it before it happened? See what? The molesting of the little baby. Don't God knows everything, right? No, who said that? The so God, hold on, Mike. You're the, saying God don't know everything now. So God don't know the everything now. Say, no, oh, oh, boy. Anyway, anyway, Mike, I want to let the people know. Hold on, Mike. Hold on, Mike, because I'm getting ready to hang up. I want to let y'all know that this is my brother, Mike. Even though that me and my brother have differences, I love this brother. Me and him always go in like that when we do this. This is my brother, Mike. I'm going to give you the last word. Go ahead, Mike. You got the floor. Thank you, my brother. And I know that I respect you and love you as my elder brother. You already. I love respect. you too, brother. You heard me. Okay. And so Genesis 6, I know that the most I said something about us. Right? Right. He says, through the prophets and the redactors and those that are inspired, he says, the ideas and the imaginations of man are continually wicked. But that's not the caveat, sir. It says that the Most High repented of himself, having made man upon the earth. That sounds like the Most High says, you know what? These motherfuckers are so wicked, and I don't actually know everything that they're going to do. I know everything that I create, like the sun, the moon, and the stars. But when God made you God, how can God know what another God thinks? Unless you become a union with that God. And that's where the, the, the enmity between God and man happened in this Genesis 6 account when men had to be wiped out because of their wicked, wicked imaginations. And we still have that in the United States and America, in our black people. But man, Sarnetta, brother, this was a very stimulating conversation. Man, call and back I in later on. Allowing. Call back in later on. I love you. I love you for life. Thank you, my brother people. Mike. You already know brothers for life. You know, even though we have our own beliefs and differences, <laughs> man, right. we respect each other. That's what that's what counts. Peace that's and black right, power black to you. Power. RBG Hebrew. Peace, brother. Peace and black power, fam. All right. That's my brother Michael Edwards. So as you can see, this was a faith belief debate versus a no debate. See, I know God. I don't believe in God. I know God. See, all of you out there. Not all of you, but some of you out there, y'all believe in God. So because you believe in God, tells me you